Okay, so in this video, we want to look at the following non-homogeneous differential equation. So we have y double prime minus y prime minus 12y equals minus 36x squared minus 54x plus 38 minus 15 cosine x minus 25 sine x. So there's a lot going on here, but we'll break it down just piece by piece. So the first thing we want to do is find the solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. So that means, so the homogeneous differential equation. So let's do that off to the side. We want to solve y double prime minus y prime minus 12y equals zero. So I've got some videos on this, but um, we'll do it real quick here. So that means we want to look at its uh, uh, related polynomial. So u squared minus u minus 12 equals zero. And so that factors into u minus four, u plus three equals zero. Great, which tells us a solution to this homogeneous differential equation is y sub h, which is c1 e to the 4x plus c2 e to the minus 3x. So we'll go ahead and keep this solution to this homogeneous differential equation off to the side because we won't really need it for a couple of steps, but we will need it at the very end. Fantastic. So now, in order to find particular solutions, we'll use something called the method of undetermined coefficients. <clears throat> so that means we want to guess that our particular solution, so I'll call it yp, has a form that's made up uh, of a function similar to what's uh, the forcing function in this case. In other words, the right-hand side of this differential equation. So notice this breaks naturally into two pieces. So this is a quadratic polynomial, and then some linear combination of trig functions. So polynomial, and then here we have uh, sines and cosines. So that gives us a good guess for what the um, particular solution should be. So it should be another quadratic polynomial, but in this case it's uh, general. We don't know what the coefficients are yet. So let's call this ax squared plus bx plus c. So that would be our quadratic polynomial plus a linear combination of sines and cosines. So here we'll have d cosine x plus e sine x. <clears throat> So that'll be our differential equation. Or sorry, that'll be our guess for our particular solution. And so since we want this to satisfy the following differential equation, we need its first derivative and its second derivative. So let's see what those are. So we have yp prime is equal to 2ax plus b minus d sine x plus e cosine x. Great, and then we have yp double prime equals, so this is gonna be 2a um, minus d cosine x minus e sine x. Again, by taking the derivative of each of those parts. Okay, so our next step will be to plug this value of yp into the original differential equation and see what we get on um, each side. So uh, I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to doing that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and plugged our guess for our particular solution into the differential equation. So I have uh, yp double prime, which was this term, 2a minus d cosine x minus e sine x minus yp prime. So that's 2ax plus b minus d sine x plus e cosine x and then minus 12yp, which was given by ax squared plus bx plus c plus d cosine x plus e sine x. And our goal is for this all to be equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So um, our strategy at this point is uh, to separate this into parts. So we want to equate all the coefficients of x squared on both sides, all the coefficients of x on both sides, and all the coefficients of our constant on both sides, and then the same for sine and cosine. So that'll give us a system of equations. So let's see what we get. So here we are equating coefficients. So let's see, the x 
squared terms. So let's see what we'll get on this side. So here we have there are no x squared terms. Here there are no x squared terms. Here there is minus 12a x squared terms. So we have minus 12a. And then on the right hand side of the equation we see minus 36. Okay, great. So we already know what a is, so a is equal to 3. And then next, we want to do the same thing for the x coefficients on both sides of the equation. So there's no x terms here. There are minus 2a x terms here, and there are minus 12b x terms here. And so that's meant to give us negative 54. Okay, good. And then finally, we want the constant terms, which I'll denote as 1. And so what we get here, there are 2a1 terms from this, and then there's minus b constant terms from this, and then there's minus 12c constant terms from, terms from this, and we're meant to have this equal to 38. So the great thing about this, and this is pretty typical, for um, the polynomial part of these particular solutions is that you end up with a triangular system of differential equations, or sorry, of uh, linear equations. So here we can immediately say that A is equal to three, and then plugging um, A equal to three into this um, will give us uh, B is equal to four, so um, I'll let you guys check that, but it's not too hard to see. Um, and then plugging in a equals 3 and b equals 4 into this, we'll see that we get uh, c equals negative 3. So that gives us uh, that solution. Great. And now we'll do the same thing. We'll equate coefficients among the sine and the cosine terms. And so, I mean, this uses some fact which we haven't proven or anything that cosine, sine, and the polynomials are like independent in some sort of way. But, uh, you know, like I said, we won't prove that. We'll just use that as a fact. <clears throat> so now let's use the cosine terms on both sides of the equation. So the cosine terms on this side of the equation, so we have negative d, so we have negative d, and then we have minus e, minus e, and then we have minus 12d, so minus 12d, and then over here the cosine term is minus 15. Okay, great. So now obviously we can put that together, and so we can put that together into um, 13d plus e equals 15. So notice I've changed the sign on everything just to make it a little friendlier, but uh, that, there's no change there. And then now let's look at the sign terms. So the coefficients of sine of x on both sides of the equation. So here we get minus e. Good. And then here we have another minus e. Good. And then, um, oh, sorry, that should be plus d. So plus d. So that's another sign term. And then finally we have minus 12e. So we have minus 12 e, and this should be equal to negative 25. So let's see, we can simplify that a bit. So that gives us um, negative d plus 13 e equals 25. Okay, so I won't solve this uh, explicitly, but you can use any, your favorite way of solving a system of linear equations. And what you'll get is the following. So you'll get e, which is the coefficient of sine, to be equal to 2. And you'll get d, which is the coefficient of cosine, to be equal to um, 1. So those will be your solutions. So again, that will give us a particular solution of this form. So we'll have 3x squared plus 4x plus, sorry, minus 3. 
good. And then we have plus cosine x plus 2 sine x. So that's the particular solution. And then let's recall that the homogeneous solution was given by C1 e to the uh, minus 4x plus C2 e to the 3x. Good. And then our most general solution will be the sum of those two. So I'll clean up the board and we'll write that uh, down as a conclusion. Okay, so let's recall that we started with the differential equation y double prime minus y prime minus 12y equals that forcing function, which I've read before and I won't read again. And uh, we determined the uh, homogeneous solution or the solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation was as follows. The solution to the the particular part was given as follows. And so that means our general solution is given as a sum of those. So I'll write it as this. So we'll have 3x squared plus 4x minus 3 plus cosine x plus 2 sine x plus c1 e to the minus 4x plus c2 e to the 3x. So that's the most general solution to this differential equation.